We spoke a lot about incremental programming, but we've not yet written a program purely using this technique. So let's take a look at that and how we can achieve that. So we have two G codes in play here. We have G90, which is our absolute measuring system, and we have G91, which changes the machine into incremental mode. So G90, our absolute coordinate system, with this coordinate system, all dimensions come from the datum position. That's where we set our X and Y zero point during the setup. So if we take a look at this sketch here, our position A is our starting position of the cutter and we wish to move it to position B. To do this in absolute, position A would be 80 millimeters from the datum and then we would move it to position B along the X axis and that would be 100 millimeters. The tool actually only moves 20 millimeters, but the dimensions are taken from the datum. Now, if we had G91 active, then we would be in the incremental mode. Now we can switch between G90 and G91 whenever we'd like with inside our programs. So if G91 is active, our measuring system would look like this. From position A, if we wish to move our cutter to position B, we would just give it a dimension of X 20 millimeters. That's because it's the distance from the last known position of the cutter and not the datum position of the part. So let's take a look at how we would program a complete part using the incremental system. So here we have a part that is 100 millimeters square and I'm not worrying about the corner radiuses, they are the same radius as the cutter. So we're just doing point to point programming here and not programming in the radiuses. So let's start writing this program and see how this looks. As before, we start off by giving an operator's note with the program number in it. Now this is in brackets, so it's purely for us to read and not the machine. We can also add more information here if we wish, such as what we're calling the part, the part's name. And like before, we end each line of program with the end of block sign, also known as a semicolon. Another operator's note with some more information for us. Here we're saying that we're going to be using tool 2 and that is a 10 millimeter diameter cutter and we're also giving it a description so we know it's a flat end mill. And here it's possibly the most important G code of this lesson, the G91. This puts the machine into its incremental measuring system. Now at the beginning of the safety line before we used G90 so now we're just changing that over to G91. The rest of the safety line is the same as before. We have G94 which sets the machine to the feed per minute rather than feed per revolution system. So the feed per revolution would be G95. The G91.1, now this one's an interesting one because this also sets an incremental way of measuring. This is the center point of the radius. This is the standard way. We normally use incremental to define the center point of radiuses. So the center point would be measured from the tool and not the datum position. Now if we had a G90.1, this would set it so the center point of the radiuses are in fact absolute and would come from the datum. The G40 cancels any active cutter compensation. And likewise, the G49 cancels any tool length compensation or any active tool lengths that may be in the machine from an old tool. The G17 defines what working plane we are using. And finally, G21. This activates the metric measuring system, where G20 would be imperial. Next up, we have another operator's note. This is just telling us what operation we're about to cut. I've called this the profile. Just in case the cutter is rotating at this stage, I've added the MO5 just to make sure the cutter has stopped. And then the MO9 command turns off any coolant. Just in case the coolant is running at this point, it will stop it. Now we're gonna issue a tool call. T2 would call up tool number two in our tool table of our CNC machine. And MO6 tells the machine to do a tool change, whether it's manual or automatic. Now it's time to turn the spindle on. So I'm gonna give it a 10,000 RPM spindle speed and MO3 turns on the spindle in a clockwise direction. The alternative to this would be MO4 to spin the spindle backwards in an anti-clockwise direction.
G54 tells the machine from now on we're taking all dimensions from our data position which has been previously set with the machine controls. Now there's many different datums and datum shifts we can use. G codes from G54, G55, G56, G57, G58 and G59 would set the datum into different positions that we can define within the machine controls. So for now we're using the datum G54. For this component, I'm going to be conventional milling and not climb milling. That means the cutter will be going around right or counterclockwise around the part. So for that, we are using G42, which is our cutter compensation to the right. And D2 calls upon the tooling information for tool two from our machine controls. And likewise, G43 sets our tool length offset or our tool length compensation. This defines how long our tool is so the machine knows where the end point of our tool so we don't crash into the table. So G43 turns this on and calls in information from the tool table using H2. We can also add the tool length here if we wish rather than using data from the tool table. So we can define that using a Z offset. So Z 20 mil tells the machine that our tool is 20 mil long from the spindle. Now if we're using coolant, we can switch it on at this stage by using M08. Now since we're using incremental to move our tool through the whole program, I am giving it a dimension of 120 millimeters in both X and Y from our tool change position or where the tool starts from within the machine. Ideally, we may be better off switching to absolute for this point and bringing it over to X0, Y0 so we know for sure the tool starts in the right position. But where this program is all incremental, I've moved this incrementally. And of course, G00 is a rapid travel move. This moves the cutter in the fastest possible way to this position. Now when incremental is active, it's not just our X and Y axes that work incrementally, our Z axes also does. So I'm rapiding down 15 millimeters from the starting position of our tool down towards the material. We have to be careful here, we don't hit the material, so we have to know exactly our starting tool position. Again, I would prefer to do this absolute rather than incremental in most cases. So I'm going to assume at this point, the tool is five millimeters off the surface of the material. So if we use a feed command of GO1 and issue a feed rate using an F value, we can then bring the tool down 10 millimeters. So we're taking a five millimeter cut and we wrap it to five millimeters above the material. And now we're getting to the main point of this lesson. We're starting to move the tool around the material using incremental movements. So our first move would be 100 millimeters to the right. For that, we give a value of X100 because our tool is moving 100 millimeters. And I'm assuming a different feed rate here, so we're cutting slightly faster as we're not plunging into the job anymore like we did with a Z move. Now our component is 100 millimeters square and the notch out the top on this side is 30 millimeters so we need to move our cutter 70 millimeters in the plus direction to get to this feature so y70 moves our cutter from the last known position to its current position here now the g01 and feed rate is still active from the previous lines so we don't need to state it again and because we're using cutter compensation we don't need to think about keeping the center point of the cutter the same distance away from the machined face. So we can just program the dimensions of the component and the machine will take care of adding the cutter radius. Now talking of radiuses, there's a corner radius here which we are not going to cut or profile with a GO3 command. This is because it's the same diameter as the cutter or the same radius as the cutter. So we're just gonna go straight into this corner just to keep things simple without adding a GO3 command. So the distance of this length we're moving is 40 millimeters, and this would be a minus number because we're moving to the left. So X minus 40, we move the cutter 40 millimeters to the left from its last position. And now in Y, we want to move 30 millimeters from the last position, so we just give it a plus value of 30. And likewise in X, where this feature is 40 millimeters long, we wish to cut across an X value of minus 40, we move the cutter to the left by 40 millimeters. Now, if this was in absolute, it would be plus 20 because our datum would be in the bottom left-hand corner and it would be the absolute position from the datum, but we're working in incremental for this lesson, so it's minus 40 millimeters.
So to bring the cutter down towards the bottom of the drawing, we would use a minus figure in Y. So Y minus 60 brings the cutter down to this position. Again, we're not programming the radius here, we're using the radius of the cutter to generate our corner rad. Minus 20 millimeters in X would bring our cutter to this position. It would move the cutter to the left by 20 millimeters from its last position. Now although this last feature is 40 millimeters, so Y minus 40 would be fine. We wish to have the cutter away from the material. I don't want to lift the cutter off the part while it's touching a finished surface. So I'm cutting a little bit further down by an extra 20 millimeters. So when we retract the cutter, it's clear of any pre-machined faces. So we don't leave any marks on that face. Now we've finished machining our part, we can lift the cutter up out of the job. And for that, I'm going to use G00, a rapid travel command. We can also use a feed rate for this, but since we're not cutting any material, it doesn't do us any harm to get the cutter out of the material as fast as possible. So I'm using G00. And then Z plus 25 will lift it to 25 millimeters from its last position. So this would be 20 millimeters above the face of the material, assuming our material is five millimeters thick. Now the good thing with working between imperial and absolute is that we can switch between the two any when we wish and any when it makes sense to do so. So if we switch over to G90 now, we can put the machine back into its absolute measuring system. This makes moving this around slightly easier as we've set our datum as the bottom left hand corner of the component and we can move it now in the absolute style for measurements from that datum position. So G90 switches our measuring system back to absolute. By being back in the absolute measuring system, we can now define how far away we wish the cutter to move from the datum position and not the last known position of the cutter. So given it an X and Y value of both 120 millimeters, will take us back to the machine's tool change position. For this, we're going to define a GOO command. This is really unnecessary as it's already active from the lines above. Although it's already active, it doesn't confuse the machine if we add it again. That's why I've added it here, just to show and demonstrate that we can add GOO. If GOO is already active, it doesn't matter. Now that the spindle is parked back in its home position, we can safely turn it off. So MO5 issues the command to turn off the spindle. Since we added cutter compensation with G42, where we're using conventional milling and we're profiling the job in a counterclockwise direction, G40 cancels any active cutter compensation. So now that we've come to the end of our program, the only thing left to do is tell the machine this is the end. So M30 tells the machine our program is finished and to rewind it back to the start, ready to run our next component. So that is how we program a part using the incremental measuring system and not the absolute. Now, as I said, you can switch between the two at any point in the program, as I demonstrated at the end, and this is often very beneficial to moving parts around. You just have to remember which system you are using because it's easy to make mistakes when doing this.